So I can assume you guys all know what a square body is. It's not a Dodge, it's not a Ford, it's a Chevy truck. Yes, Luke, I'm talking to you. Square body trucks, 73 to 80, have a common problem, and as Robbie over at United by Trucks calls it, taco hood. You don't know what a taco hood is? Stay tuned, we're gonna get to it. So taco hood on a square body truck, 73 to 80, is exactly what you see right here on my truck. It's where the hood is buckled right here because of the length of the hood and the position of the hinges. Over time, those hinges get stiff and when you're pulling down on the hood, it doesn't want to pivot right here. So the front leading edge of the hood pulls down, the hinges stay a little stiff. Over time, things start to bend. I'm not sure if you can see it right there, but we've got a stress crack right there and we've got one down on the inside of the frame. The driver's side doesn't have it at all. And this is exactly what you're supposed to see. So let's get the hood open and take a look because today we're going to try and fix this taco hood on old Project Dale truck. Now in a previous video, and I'm going to leave that linked right up here, you guys will see in that video where I had installed some hood support braces that I got from LMC truck that are meant to help protect the hood against that bending. I'm a bender. I went to bending college. I majored in bending. Now mine's already been bent, it's already been kinked, but I've installed those hinges anyway. Let's take a look. I guess they're not called hinges, they're just called support. So we've got those, you know, screwed into place here. And that's what this brace is supposed to do, is it's supposed to help keep the stresses away from these areas here uh, that are prone to cracking. And there's a better look at that crack. Face looks like a butt crack. Your face looks like a butt crack. Face looks like a butt crack. Your face looks like a butt crack. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna try and get that straight. We're gonna kind of grind a little piece away from there so we can get some clean metal to weld to. We're gonna try and weld that stress crack open a bit and help keep that hood straight. We're going to show you how we're going to do that. Of course, this isn't something that you're going to do on a freshly painted truck because hopefully you've already fixed this problem before you've got to paint. So this is what I would classify as a patina truck or an original paint truck. We're going to do our best to save it, um, but we're also not going to be too worried about a little scratch here or there. So let me grab a couple of things. We'll grab the MIG welder and we're going to show you what we're going to do here tonight. Okay, as you can see here, we've got some old timey tools, some big uh, pieces of iron with some screws in them. I guess they call these things C-clamps. have no idea why they call them that, but nevertheless, if you take a look at what I'm doing, I've got a piece of 2x4 on its side here and I've got one flat up here. The purpose of doing that is that we're going to try and straighten out the hood as best we can without damaging the paint. Um, and as you can see down here, we got quite a gap, so we haven't even started tightening that yet. So when we tighten this clamp and tighten this clamp, in theory, it should straighten out the hood and give us some space in between those two little cracks in there. And then we're going to take the MIG welder and we're going to kind of tack them up a little bit in hopes that the tack will keep it spread apart. And when we're done, we will have a hood that's straighter than it was. I've never done this. No idea. <laughs> and I'm not claiming that this, this is the way to do it, but we're hoping. And you guys are going to come along for the journey. And uh, all we got now left to do is to tighten up these C clamps and see if we can't straighten out this hood. While we're doing that, we're going to prop the hood up here on the leading edge to keep some of that weight from kind of pulling down on us. So we've got uh, some old broomsticks or some 2x4s kicking around we'll use for that. So let's get these things tightened up. So we've got these tightened up pretty good now so that the, this body line on the top leading edge of the hood looks like it's straight. I can see this crack here has already opened up a little bit and this one here, I can't see it, but I know that it's there because it was overlapped before. We're gonna try and grind a little bit of that out to get some uh, bare metal and same thing up here. 
and then we'll be able to take the, uh, the welder to it and see if we can't spot in a few pieces of metal to help hold that in place. Before we do that, we're also going to take this piece here and we're going to kind of take the punch and the hammer and push it back to where it's supposed to be because I can see where that's dropped down a little bit right there. Now I'm going to use a brass punch just because it's a little bit softer, hopefully not damaging that uh, metal too much. And we're going to give her a few love taps and see if we can't get that back in place. And that looks like it's right where it's supposed to be along that line. And now this one here, we're going to have to see if we can get that up a little bit more too. Now it looks like we've got that fairly level. So now I guess we're ready to grab the grinder and we're going to start grinding out a little bit of the metal so we can get down to the bare spots and see if we can't join that together and stiffen that up some. So uh, let's get to it. All right, now we got a clean spot uh, to start sparking off some welds in there. Now we're going to find a spot to ground out the uh, MIG welder. Should be fine just to go right to that C-clamp. <laughs> no, we're not because it's not touching the metal. I'm going to attach it right to this hinge back here. And let's see if we can't make a mess here. All right, you catch that wood on fire, isn't it? Because <laughs> that's exactly what's happening. Yowch! And once you're done doing that, you're going to want to take a wet rag and cool that down real quick so it doesn't start bubbling the paint elsewhere on the vehicle or on that hood. So even though that's a little bit bubble gum, go, go gadget, bubble gum. what I'm going to try and do first before we go too far is there's still a little bit of a seam right there on that edge. I'm going to try and touch on that a couple of times and uh, then we'll take the grinder grind it flat and see if we can't close that hood without any problems. So that did singe the paint just a little bit, but we're going to grind that down. And see how we made out. Okay, so we can remove our clamps, close the hood, and see if we still have a bump sticking out on this leading edge here. So as I started to lower that hood, I could still see a little bit of stress coming right here, so I stopped. And that's when I realized that we've got another stress point right in here where it's bending. So we're gonna take the hammer and dolly and try and beat that back in a little bit as well. And then we're gonna try and tack up that crack as you see it right there too.
That looks that. I'm going to have to clean underneath here too. She's still dirty. All right, let's uh, let's try closing that hood one more time. So I think the ultimate thing is going to be to replace these hinges. They seem to be they seem to be kind of wandering all over the place. Whereas this one is stiffer than this one, so this one wants to bend down easier. Well, I guess what it did was a couple of things. This definitely looks straighter going across here. But as you can see back here, it's still being lifted up or held up on this hinge probably back here. So I think what we're going to end up having to do is we're going to have to make some adjustments on that hinge. But I think that where we're right where we need to be here, it just continues to go up and up and up until we get back here. So we have made some difference. I'm not sure exactly what it is that we've got to do to get that to go down more. I think we're going to have to keep messing around with it. And to be fair, 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 to be fair. <laughs> yeah, I did that again. Uh, we're gonna, we have no idea what we're doing. And this is the first time we've had the opportunity to try and uh, figure out what's going on here. So let's get the hood open back up and see what is actually holding this side of the hood up. I'm guessing it's the hinge. Um, we'll get it greased up again, lube it up some, and uh, see if we can't make some adjustments on that hood. So I'm thinking the plan is right now, we're gonna spray the hinge down at all the pivot points with some penetrating fluid. And my penetrating fluid of choice is Lefty Lucy. Not to be confused with righty tighty. So let's get that sprayed down and then we're going to loosen up the actual bolts that hold the hinge onto the side of the fender and maybe we're going to try and bring that down just a smidge and see if that makes any difference. My guess is, is that those probably aren't slotted, so there's not going to be a whole lot of adjustment there. Just as I thought. I didn't see any movement there whatsoever. So, as Tom Mortsky would say, so, from North Dakota, I'll tighten those back up a bit. And if you guys haven't checked out Mortsky Repair on YouTube, I would uh, highly suggest it. It's very entertaining. And uh, him and his dog Duff have lots of good things going over there with uh, revivals and working on some stuff and trying to get things running and a burnout or two and uh, I guarantee you're going to like what you see. I'm going to leave a link in the description to go over and check out Mortsky Repair. All right, let's uh, see if we can close this thing and get any, any more adjustment in the downward position on this thing. Well, you see, I'm already noticing something. With the hood in this position, see how high up that is from the fender? On the passenger side, we go over to the driver's side. And it's already just about closed back here. So I'm thinking the, the problem that we're having is with that hinge on the passenger side. We're likely going to have to take that apart, take it right off the truck, soak it in some penetrating oil or fluid or something to try and help free that up because it's still quite stiff and that's exactly where it's staying. Something's going on there. 
something major is going on there. I'm not sure what the heck it is. Well, I'm not sure we can go any further here until we do something with those hinges. So I'm thinking what we're going to have to do is take the hood off, soak the hinges, or replace them. I'll price them up and see how expensive they are and see if that helps anything. I think we need a little bit more fluid action going here and uh, where this has been bowed up for so long. Like I said, when we get to about this point right here, it kind of stays about the same height the whole way up. So I'm thinking that that hinge doesn't want to go down there the whole way because I can push it down and I can see it hit that little bumper on the inside of the fender. And it's not doing that when I let go, it just kind of springs back up again. So I'm thinking we're going to have to do something a little bit different. That's for another time, unfortunately. But for now, we're going to clean up, put our tools away, and uh, we'll close out this video. So I guess we're right back where we started at the beginning of this video, and that is with taco hood. Um, the idea that I had in mind to try and fix that obviously didn't work. Um, I think that we did fix one problem and that was the actual kink because like I said, I think we've got this body line a little bit straighter. Excuse me. But where the problem seems to be is actually in the hinge itself. So like I said, we're going to have to do something with those hinges, either buy new ones or, or soak them and hopefully get them freed up some. Uh, but they're not they're not both closing at the same rate so uh gonna have to come up with an idea there if you guys have ever done anything like this tried to fix this uh, before and you've got a hint go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below because i am open uh, to anything to uh, try and get this done it doesn't really bother me that bad but now that i've actually started to try and fix it i'm kind of in the determining mood that i want to get it fixed so some upcoming videos that we have on old Dale the truck here is EFI. We've got fuel injection going on this truck and I've been debating up in the air which system do I go with. Do I go with the Edelbrock? Do I go with the Fitech? Do I go with the Holly or the Fast? There's a couple of other systems out there and just to let you know, I ordered one system because that's the system that I wanted to go with and then I got a sponsorship for another. So. I didn't cancel either order because I will put one on Dale the truck and I'll put the other on the Chrysler Cordoba. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. Uh, so we will have two uh, EFI systems going on two different vehicles and they're both very similar in the way that they install. So you guys can stick around for that. Hopefully you'll learn something along with myself, uh, learn how uh, EFI installs on these vehicles very simply. So we do have a sponsorship coming up for one of those and I'm looking forward to it and I'm not going to tell you which ones they are just yet. You'll have to tune in. Car Guy and Six Fan Show every Thursday evening at alternates between myself and Grant Tommy who is Straight Six Fan. I'm going to put his link right up here. You guys all know who he is anyway. But I've got a lot of new subscribers to the channel who may not have heard of the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. It's like an automotive talk show. Myself and Grant, we talk about cars, we have guests on the show, we play some fun games and we usually have anywhere from 30 to 50 people in the chat playing along with us and it's a really good time. It's about a 40, 45 minute show. Uh, we're having lots of fun with it and it starts at 7 o'clock Central, 8 Eastern every Thursday evening uh, and we just had it on Grant Tommy's channel. It'll be back on my channel this coming week and uh, hopefully we can see you guys there. That's all I got for you. Um, it's time to go home get this video edited so I can have it up for uh, today or the day that you guys are watching it and uh, yeah. Time for a cold snack or a ham sandwich. That too. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you all watching. I appreciate the thumbs up and sharing and telling all your friends. If you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and do so. Uh, we're trying to get to 21,000 subscribers by the end of 2021, and I can't do it without you guys. So please, if you haven't done so yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, and a lot of you guys were asking about stickers. Stickers are coming. Uh, we're waiting on a final draft for the actual design. You guys have all seen it in the intro. And uh, once we get that done, a lot of you have been asking about stickers. I'll be sending a few of them out uh, and they will be for sale as well. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. God bless. We'll see you in the next video. That wasn't so bad. Only had to do the outro once.